Hi there, Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. As you can see, I'm out here in the Peak District sunshine today, and I'm up on the moors riding this. So this is the Moto Marini Xcape 649, uh, which I have ridden before. I just had a very short test ride out of Two Wheel Nation uh, near Barnsley, uh, just uh, sort of north northeast of Sheffield. And yeah, for that very short test ride that I did, I really liked it. Since then, I've seen it at the ABR Festival where there's pretty much always a queue of people looking to take it out for a ride. And Paul at Two Wheel Nation had said to me before that if I wanted to come and take it out on a trail, then I was welcome to do so. And when someone offers you something like that, why wouldn't you do it? So here I am today on a part of the Trans Euro Trail, which you can see over my shoulder behind me. Uh, this is the Houndkirk Road that runs from near Ringinglow over towards Fox House on the west side of Sheffield. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be riding this Motor Marini Xcape 649 over there. Now this bike is pretty much as it comes as standard. The suspension hasn't been set up for me. It is fully adjustable. Uh, these Marzocchi forks, uh, both for compression and rebound damping and preload. And I think it's just preload for the back. Uh, it's running the stock tires, which have done about two and a half thousand miles. They're Pirelli Scorpions and they're you know, reasonably warm. The, this bike did actually find its way to the Abar Festival. So if you rode one there, you might well have ridden the same bike. Uh, it doesn't have any hand guards. It doesn't have any crash bars. It doesn't have a bash plate. So I'm going to kind of take it slow. Uh, I think anything I break I have to pay for and if I break the bike in half then I bought it. So let's not do that. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll get on uh, and I'll just see how it goes. Now I can give you my sort of pre-impression which is that it's a 230 kilo bike. So you know I know that even my CRF 300 Rally uh, is pretty heavy at around 160 kilos for a trail bike. You know, anyone who's used to riding an enduro or something closer to 100 kilos is probably looking at this and thinking who really wants to ride a 230 kilogram 650 cc i think it's 58 brake horsepower bike on a road like this well today i do uh, at least just to try it and see what it's like so i'll crack on uh, i'll get through this gate and then we'll see how we go uh, so here we go there's a couple of guys with uh radio control cars just up there kind of got out of the way. Thank you. Well, first thoughts, it doesn't feel like a dual sport. That suspension is not the most refined in the world and even compared to something on my GS this does seem to be rattling around rather a lot on this rocky trail. Uh, standing position for me is if anything um, I'd probably do with some bar risers, but I'm six foot one, so I'm sure this would be fine for most people. And uh, well, it's okay. I mean, it's it's probably it's better at a trail like this than my Royal Enfield Himalayan Scram. But then again, it does cost three thousand pounds more, so you'd kind of expect that, I suppose. But it's certainly capable of getting over a, uh, a trail like this. I can hear the fan running. I don't know if that's because it's running warm now. I'm going a bit slower. I'm not getting the air through the radiator, but we shall see. What I do find is that the fueling is a little bit snatchy at low speeds, which would probably get a bit annoying as time goes on. I'm not going very quickly. I'm only doing 10, 15 miles an hour, something like that uh, in first. So maybe that's the problem. What I did find when riding through the town was that in the low revs in even in second, it was a little bit jerky. Maybe it's a Euro 5 thing. Let's try second. See, second almost feels a little bit too high gearing for me. I mean, it will potter along if I'm sitting down like this. And I actually feel quite at ease doing that. But unless I think you're going a bit quicker, um, I don't think it's... Uh, well, it's not, it's not really geared for trails like this. At least not at my level of ability. And at these sorts of speeds, maybe if you're going significantly quicker, you get a bit more out of it. But I think that this bike is probably going to be more at home as an adventure bike that occasionally goes on trails. I think if you're buying this as a trail bike, um, well, I'm sure you'll find it can do trails like this, as me as a pretty much a novice is showing. But it doesn't mean that this is its strength. It is definitely more comfortable, significantly more comfortable than my Royal Enfield Scram was on here though. On that I could really feel the suspension was more road orientated 
it's a lovely day to be out and it's a lovely chance to be able to try uh, this bike on a trail like this I know some dealers really aren't keen on anyone taking a you know a demo bike out on a trail but Paul at Two Wheel Nation was quite happy for me to do so so this suspension is actually fully adjustable with both compression and rebound adjustment on the forks and I think just uh, preload on the back so I think it is certainly tunable for riding you know if you're going to do a bit more off-road does have tubeless tires which is a nice touch uh, tubeless wheels even with tubeless tires and I'm sure you could run it at much lower pressures for these sorts of trails than I am which would help I think if you were going to do some bit more off-road on it you could certainly adjust the bike to suit that it's such a lovely day to be out here on the Houndkirk Road overlooking the city of Sheffield and here is a little bit more interesting but yeah you know what that's all that's all good a little bit of a slip of the back wheel well nearly lost it there I'll probably go in the video at the end and we're off again and you know what for stuff like this actually standing is is pretty convenient and coming through here we have a bit of a climb a few bumps going in that's a bit bumpy drop it down a gear and yeah I can hear a few rattles coming from the bike on here but I think it is kind of a bumpy road I don't think this bike's had its first service yet so I'm sure there's lots of things that we checked for tightness as part of that but it is coping pretty well it's like over these stones yeah that's okay and actually the handling over these sorts of rocks and things feels relatively light I know one of the criticisms has been the weight of the bike at 230 kilos which don't get me wrong is heavy I'm not pretending anything to the contrary but but the thing with bikes is quite it's how heavy they feel not not how heavy they are I've no doubt that picking this up will work up a sweat but riding along here at low speeds which maybe is what people who buy this bike will do from time to time uh, I'm honestly not really noticing it I mean then again I do ride my GS which is another 30 kilos on top of this uh, and I ride my CRF 300 which is I think uh, 70 kilos lighter but you know this bike probably does sit in between those two and actually this is uh, pretty easy for me to handle over here like I said I'm, I'm kind of a novice you know I do a bit of trail riding here and there and I'm not uh, averse to going out on my own but at the same time I'm not an enduro rider I'm not massively experienced so I think with a bit of practice probably nearly anybody else could have a go at something much like this uh, on this bike and here comes a CRF 300 and a 250 in fact there's a whole load of rallies coming through this is part of the Trans Euro Trail so I suspect there's quite a few people out from that here today you know what yeah I quite like this as a trail bike I know I think when I started off when I first got on that first bit I was going over the rocky bit and I thought yeah I'm not sure uh, but I've only done probably a, a mile a couple of miles and it has definitely grown on me um, yeah I can definitely see the appeal of this as a trail bike um, not <clears throat> not exclusively you know I think it does cruise on a motorway and if you want to see what that's like please check out my other video but yeah we're on here <clears throat> it's uh, it's great And there we go that is the last gate closed and i'm almost back on the road so i'll just do this little bit and then i think uh, i'll head down to grindleford cafe and then i'll record my final thoughts down there so yeah, this has been rather fun and i did hear the other day that someone was telling me that they've been for a test ride and they were told that uh, they can only take a test ride with a 500 pound deposit which seemed a little bit odd um, but i have no reason uh, to believe that they were lying 
and when I compare it with this this bike which is the demonstrator from Two Wheel Nation in Hoyland near Barnsley and they're more than happy for me to take it out for the day it is a Friday it's a lovely weather it's not like it's a bad riding day or anything and they even said yeah take it on a trail if you want to I mean I think they did also say that if I if I damage anything I paid for it but the fact they let me take it out at all is is great and to do this right then just coming back onto the road now so I'll just head down to Grindleford and after that that little bit of rocky trail to get back on road suddenly everything seems very serene and smooth as you'd probably expect I should also add that this bike doesn't have a bash guard it doesn't have any crash bars it doesn't even have hand guards I think this is just how it comes and I think like a lot of bikes there are always things you can add yourself whichever particular brand or type you favour this might look familiar to some of you who know Grindleford Cafe it's quite a popular bike stop off although sometimes it does get pretty busy especially on weekends in fact I've been here when there's been cars parked all the way up here today on a Friday this looks uh, refreshingly quiet or it's closed there's a few bikes there so that's it that's my ride over the Hancock Moor on the Motor Marini 649 X Cape just to see what it was like and yeah I, I probably wasn't that consistent what I was saying as I went through it because I think I kept leaping to conclusions then found that something was either a little bit better or a little bit worse uh, that last bit coming down the hill on the very loose rocks I did feel the weight of the bike you know even trying to just you know control it with a bit of back brake uh, I could feel it um, so yeah I think earlier on I said I couldn't really and I think when I was cruising along going over some of those rollers in second gear sort of 15 20 miles an hour uh, the bike felt light as you like. I mean the steering on it's great. Uh, I don't think it's the, the world's best trail bike. Of course it isn't. Couldn't be. But as an adventure bike, which might spend most of its time on road, and this bike, you know, it's not had anything special done to it. This is exactly as it comes from stock, from new. No hand guards, no bash guard, no crash bars, so I'm quite glad I didn't drop it. It's got some fairly worn, so two and a half thousand mile uh, Pirelli Scorpions on it. So yeah, it's, you know, nothing's been done to make it particularly good for trail riding. But me, a relative novice, could just pick the bike up and go for a ride today. And I yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. So I hope this has been interesting and useful. If it has, maybe I'll see you next time. And thanks for watching.